Hey guys, I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my life living in Leo, Nicaragua. So today, this is a weird one, but I want to address this because this comes up so often, and it's a slow day in the week. So we're doing this as kind of an extra video. I had a chance to do some recording today. We're going to knock this out. But I want to talk about how a lot of information is presented when you're seeing it online, especially here in the forums uh, for, for my channel and for other things in Nicaragua. There's a lot of misinformation or disinformation or gaps or whatever that's going on. And I want to talk about how you can recognize some of this and things you may not be thinking about and why it's super dangerous to go down some of these paths because there's a lot of people out there looking to make a quick buck off of you. Not the person who's posting, I'm sure, but someone trying to make a quick buck off of him, very likely. And you can be easily put into a position of getting in a lot of trouble because you're repeating information that's meant to be kept secret. So let's talk about that right after the bump. All right, so I'm going to lead off with a quick story. So obviously we've posted a lot of information on here, and as many of you know, I am monitored. So the information you get from this channel has a tendency towards being pretty well verified because if I say anything dramatic that's incorrect, there are people who let me know, right? Like, so I'm very public and, and that's fine. Like I have open channels, I'm a residency candidate. So all that stuff, it's meant to be very transparent and uh, I want my information to be accurate. So I encourage if, uh, you know, if an agency or whatever says, oh no, you posted incorrect information. We want to know about that. Like uh, we wouldn't want misinformation to be out there. So we've gone to great lengths. Now today, I mean, there's no reason to call them out because I don't think it was meant to be, I mean, like, yeah, there's a little bit of like poking the bear, but it wasn't meant to be misinformation, right? And uh, in this particular case, and this is just one example of many, it just what made me think of it tonight, is, you know, this person who's not supposed to be related to the process that we're talking about said he didn't have to do a particular thing. And it's like, well, okay, but why are we getting this information? If we know it's not a person who's an authority in the situation, uh, they don't have the authority to say the thing. Why were they asked in the first place if they can't give an authoritative answer? Uh, in this particular case, legally, they're not allowed to answer at all. Um, we are not able to use that person as a reference. Of course, they would lose their jobs. They'd be in huge trouble if uh, people found out that they actually did this, if it really happened, right? I'm not accusing uh, anyone of having done anything, but the the person posting is, right? Um, and making this claim that someone actually did something um, that would be um, not exactly a felony, but something that would get them in an awful lot of trouble for uh, violating some, um, if nothing else, very strong uh, political taboos. Let's put it that way. Uh, crossing departmental lines and speaking for someone else as an authority figure, but when they're not at all. Uh, so things like that, like, like, so these claims are made, and of course we don't, we can't verify it with the agency because they would be in huge trouble if they did. So uh, the claim is that they uh, uh, did something illegal, on, and that in that was in the favor of of the person asking. Um, but we we don't have any way to verify that person, and we can't ver verify the person posting, because of course they're making a claim that itself would someone has to be in trouble if this claim is being made, uh, and that has been said to me. This is a claim you cannot make. Right, and this claim is being made uh, because it's incorrect. Right now, he's just saying that someone made an incorrect claim. So if he can prove who who did that and he wants to report them, that's fine. Now, in a in a separate instance, I had a situation where someone was trying to claim, and this is unrelated. This is a while ago. Uh, someone was trying to claim that they watched my videos and I was uh, spreading disinformation, and clearly I was just posting videos uh, to get attention. Right, which uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but you could kind of see, okay, that's that's kind of an argument you can make. And uh, we have them on recording, the person who was speaking to them got them to record that the reason that my information was misinformation is because you could just pay this person to break the law and forge documents on your behalf. And so my statement that something was a requirement was only a requirement legally. You didn't actually have to do it if you had a fake lawyer who would forge your documents for you, um, which is quite a brag to make on an encrypted recorded channel. But they did, and we have a recording of it. Uh, and it also turned out that that person was not a registered lawyer as well. Um, but so like that idea that there's people out there not just forging documents but presenting uh, criminal activities as – well, of course, as an expat, you're just going to go hire someone. Now, some people have said, obviously, you know, there's ways to do things. If it, Yeah, we all know that crimes can be committed. When we say something is a requirement, what we mean is under the law. 
That's what a requirement means. We don't mean that there's no physical way uh, to get around it, right? If we say uh, you have to have a passport to cross at the border, well, of course we know that there are illegal immigrants who sneak over borders. We're not claiming that it's physically impossible to run past border control before they can tackle you, right? That's not what we're claiming. No one thinks that's what we're claiming, but that's how the responses are often framed, that it's as if, well, you know, you could, just because the law says it doesn't mean you can't break the law. Okay. When we say the speed limit is 55 and someone says, you know, well, my car goes faster, so it's not 55, it doesn't change the speed limit. Uh, so, so there's been a lot of pressure from a lot of people who claim, and in one case, we actually have the recording, so I know this person claiming to be a lawyer had done it. But in most cases, all these claims are an arm's length. Well, I'm not saying it myself in case they get caught. I'm saying that someone I'm unwilling to identify said this thing. Right. In every case, it's double anonymity. An anonymous person who will we, – we can't – because they're anonymous, we can't vouch that they're even an actual lawyer. They're actually a police officer. They're actually a whatever. It's just a – it's a fictional person somewhere who is – and it's always – in every case so far that this has come up – I know this is kind of ambiguous. I'm trying to keep it that way. In every case that I see people making these wild claims, it's always a – completely anonymous person who will have no authority to make the claim in question. And then the person who claims that they did that that anonymous person did it themselves is anonymous. It's always two steps of anonymous with enough information so that everyone involved knows that even if both person people weren't anonymous, that it would not be authoritative. And even if they had said it, it wouldn't mean anything. They might get in trouble for having said it, but they don't have the authority to, to pass on that, in, that misinformation. Every time, it's exactly the same pattern. And I predicted this in several videos a month ago, and it's still what we see. But all that aside, other than warning you to look for these patterns, if you cannot identify the person who is making a claim, assume it is incorrect. If someone, including me, is like, well, there's a person, but I can't identify them, right? In all my videos, I'm identifying my source. Even if I can't put their name on it, you can go look up their name. Uh, it's it's watch out for these double anonymous, everyone's indemnified, and if you follow the advice, and sometimes the advice isn't advice. Sometimes it's just like a hint, right? Oh, I was told blah, blah, blah. I'm not saying you should do that. I'm just saying, right? Obviously, they're trying to, to pressure you in some way to see this. as I don't know. I don't know what drives people to do this. But uh, so something that I really important about this, this is the this is the driving it home moment here is when you go and get misinformation intentionally, when you go and uh, hire a lawyer to forge your documents or whatever, it, this just blows my mind. The number of people who are at least implying that they and everyone they know have been involved in forged documents and faked processes and bribing people to get their residency is unbelievable because one, it is not hard unless you are destitute. And if you're destitute, how are you paying for, for forgeries and stuff? These things aren't cheap. And that it's this widespread thing, just well, everyone's doing it. Trust me, I don't know anyone who would do that because that's insane. It is so easy to get residency. It is so cheap to get residency. It's so easy to do it legally. I understand getting up a steel from your home country is a pain in the butt. Like that, yeah. But it's not like hard, hard. It's just really annoying. And once you have it, it's done, right? But all the requirements you need are super basic and simple and, and really dangerous to forge, right? Like, well, I'm going to forge this government agency stuff. I'm going to forge Interpol stuff. Like, seriously, you would, you would forge that stuff? That's crazy, and then, you know, it's residency. So if this, if anyone ever found out all the people who are doing this, who are somehow bypassing the rules and bypassing the processes and, and getting falsified paperwork, apparently that's what's implied or flat out said in many cases. Like, do people not realize that the reason that most people state that they want residency is for some amount of stability and like, like you know you're going to be there. Like, you just feel really stable because you have residency. And I get why you would feel that way. But you must feel terrified, feeling a need to have residency paperwork, but getting it illegally. Because if anybody ever found out, if someone ever looked at your paperwork and said, wait, this isn't, these aren't in order. If someone ever decided that they wanted to extort you, <laughs> there you go, right? You're, what are you going to do? 
they can just call someone and be like, ah, they offered me, they threatened me, whatever. Their, their documents are forged, right? Who's going to win? The person who turned you in or you, the person who's already over the border uh, having been deported because you will be deported instantly, I'm sure. Who wouldn't deport someone with fake residency documents? Because not only do you have the crime of forging those documents or whatever got you through that process, but also – you clearly never had residency. So there's no residency to use as a, a kind of anchor to hold you back from deportation. Even without the crime, you'd be up for deportation potentially because you're an illegal immigrant. But it means you had been an illegal immigrant having committed a crime. So it really layers on top. It may seem like a really – when people are recommending it, ah, everyone, everyone commits crimes to get their residency. Trust me. I know a lot of residents. None of them would ever – ever consider doing something like that, not with their residency, right? Like there's a lot of little things in life that maybe people are willing to cut corners on and, and you know, look the other way. But when it comes to your, your ability to remain in a country, that is something that I cannot fathom someone being willing to take that kind of risk on because there's no going back. Once you've done that, you are, you are owned by whoever knows that you did that. That's absolutely crazy. Uh, and you'll be owned for forever because those documents will be on file for forever. And someone's going to be able to go back and be like, this isn't my signature. That isn't a real thing. That's not you know verified. That's not in the system. And when someone makes that claim and then they can back it up with, look, it's not in the system. Wow. Right? So I can't believe how many people are making an effort to promote this concept. But it's a major thing. And that's really what people are implying. Well, all these posts over and over and over again. Oh, you don't have to do this. Oh, I heard you don't have to do that. I went and checked with someone who's not official. Every time it seems to lead to a hope that someone will re reach out and be like, how did you get away from this? How did you get around this? And all for something you don't really need 90% of the time. All for something that there's another way around. All for something that shouldn't – like it. there's so many posts – I see, especially around residency, of false pressure to get a residency, false panic when there's the slightest requirement for the residency, and then this false hope that you don't actually need to do the things that are required for, for residency and all this like kind of misinformation, but mostly with implication, right? Well, I didn't quite say that. We all knew what I meant, but I didn't actually say it. Why do you think I said it? Well, why else did you say this, right? And it seems only logical that the that the purpose is, well, someone will reach out and be like, well, what do you mean? Let's talk privately. And then there's a chance to sell illegal services or whatever. I don't know. Like, there, wh what is the logic? What is the pressure otherwise that could possibly be motivating people to promote things that are so – I don't know. It's, it's absolutely crazy. But this keeps coming up over and over and over again. But never once – from someone who will stand by with an identity of them or the person they're making the claim against. It's always, look for it, double anonymous. If you can't see someone's face and be confident that it's really them, if you don't have a way to report someone to the government and they're telling you something, like if they're just telling you something that's obvious, right? Like, oh, I also went to Granada and they it is a good place to go tour the chapel, to go tour the cathedral. Sure, it, People will anonymously give acceptable information all the time. But when someone's like, oh, no, all the obvious information is untrue. Here's the secret, right? If they're anonymous, you need to be super, super careful. Question those things because there's almost always money to be made somewhere. And there's always reason that people want to cover up the things that they've done. They want to get other people, right? Misery loves company, like that kind of stuff. That's real, right? And some people just – some people have been fooled by other people. And then they're tricked into repeating it. That's real, right? Like these lawyers, in theory, that are committing crimes, they want to get as many people to vouch for them as possible because it makes it harder and harder for people to decide to turn them in. But remember, when I'm on the show and I'm saying stuff, you know who I am and the government knows who I am. And if I do something, you can turn me in. People have turned me in, right? I know this works. People have called me like, oh, he said these things. And they're like, yeah, he did. And they're right. <laughs> right? So, so – I know that people will call me in and that process gives me a lot of faith in what I'm doing and it should give you a lot of faith in what I'm doing, right? You can see that I'm really in Nicaragua. You can see who I am beyond the shadow of a doubt and you can easily verify me with, with agencies, right? Easy, easy.
more than just about anyone. I've been on national television, right? You can just pull up the TV shows and be like, look, this guy. Oh, yeah, we know who he is. Obviously, he's on TV. We have his ID, right? Super, super simple to verify everything about me and a few other uh, people. But there's so much misinformation coming from people who you don't know who they are. You don't know where they are. You don't know what their sources are. You have, And there's no way to force a check, right? If someone could have been here, and now they're in the U.S., now they're in Panama, now they're in Bolivia, doesn't matter. Now they're somewhere else and they're going to make claims. Well, they're out of jurisdiction. No one's able to uh, forcibly verify uh, or, or report them and be like, no, they're spreading misinformation or whatever. So be really cautious of when somebody is in a position where they can just say anything because there's so many people for some reason who are incentivized to do this. I, I really don't know why. I imagine, I imagine that there's a combination of fear and confusion and people who are trying to uh, spread misinformation and so they get a lot of other people to spread it because uh, uh, that's, that's a good way to make it work, right? You need people who are innocent, who don't understand that they're spreading misinformation because that's how you get the sound, the feel of confidence to that. But never once have I gotten one of those people, and I'm sure many of them are innocently swept along and being, you know, lied to themselves, they always catch on enough to know, well, they're not actually going to stand behind it. They're not going to actually put their name on it. They're not going to put their cedula behind it. They're not going to do those things. They're not going to put their ID um, and, and be willing to be verified. So those are the things you need to look for. And it's very easy when you have a critical eye. But if you're just reading things quickly, it's really easy to be like, well, I'm sure this person knows. Like what, what makes one person more uh, viable than another? Well, actually quite a lot, right? And we put it out there. And, and it's fine to question my stuff. I have whole videos on how to double check my stuff. Don't just listen to me for sure. Because if you just start trusting me, then you'll likely just start trusting other people. And that's a foolish path to go down. But when you see anonymous people, immediately you should say, this could be a bot. This could be a person trying to confuse me. This could be a person trying to sell me something. And it's not always. That's what makes it confusing. But just know, once someone's not willing to be public identifiable, they aren't standing behind their words. They don't believe in what they're saying. You shouldn't either. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel and help keep getting the real word out there, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, share on social media. Tell your friends about the show. And I will see all of you tomorrow. And hit one of these links if you would be so kind. If none of these suit your fancy, scroll down and find one of the many other fine YouTube programs that are advertised on the sidebar or underneath and click on that.